Uh, hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another crypto video. Today, we have a summary of what is going on with the Ripple v SEC lawsuit, as yesterday was a pretty big shock to everybody in the community, but I think as time has gone a little bit further now, we have some different conclusions to draw. And of course, there's also some news to talk about, like for example, what you're seeing right in front of you, so again, we also have to discuss that today. Having said that, if you are enjoying these daily crypto videos, make sure you press the like button to help with the YouTube algorithm, and I also recommend you to subscribe to the channel so you can be notified every single time that some news happens that you want to be updated with for whatever. And also, I just want to quickly say I appreciate you very much. Ripple client DLocal expands partnership with Amazon to let international merchants sell goods in Brazil. Ripple client DLocal now works with Amazon Giant to enable international merchants to sell their products in Brazil. On its own, this is actually not that big of an announcement unless you didn't even know that it existed. Ripple has a ton of partnerships and DLocal, which again is a Uruguayan payment startup company, runs on RippleNet and that one is connected to Amazon for a little while. They've been partnered for a little while, but right now the Brazil part has been added to it. Again, Making the reach that Ripple has or making the reach that Ripple's partners has, it depends on how you want to see it, yet again, bigger. And I really, really love to see these articles, even though you might say they're not that big of a deal. If you also consider how heavily DLoco is expanding right now with a $617 plus million dollar US IPO, it's a lot going on, right? There's a, there's a lot going on there. And I, I do believe that this will keep expanding as well. Again, broadening the reach for Ripple. That also brings you to the point, Ripple is going to have such a huge snowball effect, which people forget about, that a lot of their partners, which may, uh, might run on X, sorry guys, X, I want to say X current, but it's now Ripple net might switch over to again, get more partners rolling on there. Or if for example, D local is running on RippleNet and they work with a company like Amazon. It might be that this Amazon through working with D local, which runs on Ripple are, is actually working with Ripple then, right? Just think about that for a little second. Now, a lot of people have been saying that XRP slash Ripple has turned negative now because of the, um, mostly the news that we saw yesterday or due to technical analysis. I would like to firmly disagree. I would like to state that Bitcoin is going to be the main factor for everything right now. And that one is looking good. Until we are proven otherwise, XRP, Bitcoin, whatever is looking good right now. And we are expecting that all of this news that we've gotten in the last like 24 hours or so, which people were speculating negatively about, now that's actually not going to have any negative or lasting effect on XRP. One of the things which Ripple stated was that the whole extension would be kind of an existential threat to Ripple's business. But as we moved on here, there's actually a multitude of, of reasons why the judge could have actually said, you know what, SEC, we're going to grant you your, your um, extension, basically. Now, one of those is, for example, that the judge had so many decisions to make that she decided to extend this discovery period, purely because there's so many decisions on her part that she wants some extra time. The second could be, like the SEC said, that they just want to make sure that no stone is left unturned and if one party wants to discover more, they should be given the time to do that. Even though Ripple says that the SEC had enough time to do it, um, there's a lot of motions which got in the way, right? There were a lot of motions, there was even our motion to intervene, it all took a lot of time and we could definitely come together on the fact that it could have been a little bit easier for the SEC. I mean, people could have definitely made it easier. And there was a lot of time wasted on non-discovery purposes, basically. So, you know, some other discoveries might have had a little bit more time. Point being, again, that a extension would just help them out to find some stuff, which they could have if there weren't this many distractions. That also, of course, goes for Ripple where the SEC right now is saying that they don't have enough time to actually hand over all those documents. And again, the judge might have actually looked at that and been like, you know what, you don't have enough time. Or if you're saying you don't have enough time, here's extra time so you can't complain about it. And another one, again, because there's so many, is that right now, by this extension, the SEC has forfeited some of their, their, their um, reasonings behind, for example, going against the motion to intervene. 
One of the main arguments for not allowing the motion to intervene was that it would mess up the schedule that the court now had. And that argument, then again, as a defense, falls away completely, meaning that there's now a higher chance that the motion to intervene can pull through. And again, because the motion to intervene might pull through, they might want more discovery time and so forth and so on. Maybe the judge has a completely, entirely big plan. It could definitely be the case. And again, the judge has to make a decision on quite a lot of things. Most likely, she also understands that Ripple has got way more negative from this entire um, extension than, than the SEC does. She most likely knows it all. We're not going to bash, bash the judge just quite yet. Let's quickly see how this all ends up and what Ripple's going to react and what Ripple's going to do. Ultimately, all of this is just more and more positive for a settlement to come sooner as the SEC has now got a little bit more leverage, which might help. Then again, guys, understand that Ripple will always want to settle if the deal is right. So please stop saying in the comment section that they wouldn't. They definitely, definitely, definitely would. And right now, there's a couple other things which just came out. Let's quickly see if we can find it. Um, one of the things here comes from Stewart. It basically says, United States Government Accountability Office report to the Committee on Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs, U.S. Senate May 14th or May 2014. Other virtual currencies that have been created are not based on the Bitcoin protocol. One of the more prominent examples is XRP. And again, this comes from the United States Government Accountability Office, uh, their report. It says right here, not based on the Bitcoin protocol. One of the more prominent examples is XRP, which is used within a decentralized payment system called Ripple. Ripple allows users to make peer-to-peer -peer transfers in any currency. A key function of XRP is to facilitate the conversion from one currency to another. For example, if a direct conversion between Mexican peso and Thai baht is unavailable, the peso can be exchanged for XRP and then XP for baht. The total value of XRP was only 800 or 900 million dollars back in time. Um, and I didn't actually read this part because this is not the one I wanted to cover. So I'm not sure if the bottom here says something interesting. What I wanted to read was actually one of the things from Crypto Law. Let's actually quickly uh, go see his last tweet now. Jamie Dimon from JP Morgan says, JP Morgan is hoarding cash because very good chance inflation is here to stay. And John Dean says, what does that mean? Because in the end, this makes absolutely no sense. Jamie, uh, that makes no sense. If inflation is here to stay, why would you hoard cash? What is the purpose of that? Garf said, please explain to me how hoarding a non-performing asset like cash is anything but idiotic if inflation truly is here to stay. Which I am not sure exactly one reason to do. I'm, I don't even have one reason why this would be smart. Not exactly sure what happened here, to be honest with you. No, the one I wanted to cover was from Crypto Law. Let me quickly open it on the side here so you guys can see it. Crypto Law, uh, which is again from John Deaton, actually posted all those new documents about the XRP lawsuit. Let me type in Crypto Law. We shall find it. We shall find it. Here we go. All right. So they posted a couple of different things regarding the XRP lawsuit right now, the Ripple lawsuit. Again, you can see multiple different pieces of content because, again, they have everything on their website, which sometimes is very nice. Uh, and I told you guys in the previous video, I need to get a little bit further into it. You can see here, we got all three of those documents, one, two, three. And the first one, again, being, um, oh, let's actually just quickly read through it, right? The first one being the last one. No. Um, let's just quickly read through it a little bit. Pursuant to section IC of the court's individual practices in civil cases, plaintiff securities and exchange commission respectfully request a 60-day extension. And below it, I think the, the judge always says, um, no, this is actually just the request itself. This is not the new. No, this is from the, the 2nd of June, okay? This one is also from the 2nd of June, and this one is from the 11th of June. No, these are just the motions themselves. Okay, I see it now. Okay, I get it. So, the motions themselves, which are basically something that, again, can be granted or denied, they're posted here. So, we have those, those um you know, those documents right here. Now, the replies from the judge to these three motions can be found in here. I actually didn't know that the judge only gave such a small report. I thought she always, you know, gives a little bit of a reasoning as to why. But no, she just says it and that's basically over with. Here was a notice of motion to obtain international discovery. Again, this is Ripple's side of wanting more info on their exchange partners to kind of prove to the SEC that the majority of what they're claiming as, you know, false transactions or investment sales. If, no, sorry, guys illegal security offerings that those were all outside of u.s sec jurisdiction here is another one notice of motion to obtain international discovery basically the same thing and this was again the extension of time which were all 
in here right here they're all granted so basically ripple can go surge abroad which again the, the the top or two of the parts are about and the other one is again extension of time which the sec requested maybe again maybe it all comes together right maybe the judge also noticed that ripple needs more time to get all this stuff done it's really really hard to say exactly how this one fits the boot let's quickly see if there's any update right now last hour or so no again we got two oh maybe let's actually quickly refresh it again there should be one more, right? Because we got 246, 247, and 248. Maybe it's being concluded in one document, though. I'm not exactly sure about that. No, yeah. That's definitely starting to get interesting. But yeah, a little summary again. It's not that bad of a deal because there's so many different things which you could put there right there. In the end, we are still extremely bullish on it. Oh, and I'm still holding. If I'm not, I will tell you. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you press the like button and subscribe. And I will definitely see you guys again in another crypto video later today. Take care, everybody, and have a nice one.